Okay, so English. Sorry, I didn't say that before. We've got an absolutely great guy here, Nestor, who presents himself as a tech enthusiast, a computer science engineer, a web security geek, and I discovered something else last night. He is top as a as a touristic uh, um, counselor. <laughs> <laughs> Nestor comes from the Canary Islands, and yeah. he went through the all the details of the Canary Islands last yeah. night at the meal. So if there's anything you want to know about your next holiday destination, that's going to be the next talk. He's that's going right. to give a talk about the Canary Islands. Definitely. So he's got a round one fight. I don't know if he's got his boxing gloves at the ready, um, but we're going to see how we can survive a malicious hacker. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think it's it going to be very easy to, to follow me because my English is super basic. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you're going to understand it very easily. So before starting, round one, fight. Make a bell in your mind to someone that remembers your childhood, right? Street fighter, round one. So that's the idea in this presentation. Um, my idea is to try to explain how cybersecurity works in WordPress uh, environment using this um, uh, here. This using this um, driving uh, thread, right? So let's start. Who has played to this game any time, once time in the, in the life? Yeah. More or less? Oh, come on, that's more, <laughs> that's more normal. Okay, so let me present it myself. I don't know. Okay, uh, I was thinking about hacking the, um, the organization, but I don't have permission. Okay, no worries. Um, I have a CISP uh, certification. For those that doesn't know, it's a security high-level um, certification, uh, international one. I have been working as a web security analyst at Godari, Sukuri, until 2023, that now laid off affected me. So at this moment, I'm trying to start uh, this blog. It's really empty right now, but you can contact from there if you want. <laughs> so uh, my, my idea is to develop it a, a little bit more. So right now, I'm brand ambassador of Patchstack, which is a company uh, focused in open source security. Right now, it's also offering a free vulnerability plugin. Uh, so you want to just get into the, the, the website. And also, you can find me uh, in Twitter using Farah. In, uh, in fact, everything that you will find online as Farar probably is, me, is mine because it was an, a name I invented, I don't know, 25 years ago or something like that. Okay, first of all, cybersecurity is a very tough um, subject to all of uh, all the people that are not uh, technical and are not related with the world. So let me introduce what a security analysts do, or what is security in the, in the world of uh, uh, digital, right? So what we are doing is just toward this part. The information is what, is what uh, we have to guard, we have to protect, right? So um, let me put that there for, for you. Um, so it's a rounding of uh, three abilities of the information that we have to keep in mind always, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Um, one of the talks before talking about, uh, about some of them, but the, the important here is that you should get the information you have permission to in the right time and without any uh, modification, so uh, integrity. And about that, we have to protect them uh, from these all uh, three fields, right? Communication, hardware, and software. And above that, we have the physical security, personal organization. That it's it's not part of this um, of the cybersecurity. Uh, I mean, in this level. So the important thing uh, thing that you have to uh, get from this is that the information security is always taking care of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. As I said. Is it easier for you, the, right, the, the information for the right person at the right moment and without any modification? So what, we want, uh, what do we want to do in this talk is just to create a video game using the, the as a base, a Street Fighter, OK? So I will try to explain you how security in WordPress uh, works using this. So our fourth, 
our castle, our uh, thing to protect is our side, the WordPress side as well. So here it is. We are this guy that is protecting the castle. We have to protect from the bad guy, the attacker. And we have a live bar up there. And that's when we, we start, right? So the live, uh, sorry, possible objects that could be interesting in, um, in a WordPress site is all of them. Users, users uh, database, uh, the database itself, the content. Why I differ between, between the content and the database? Because some, some people try to, doesn't understand the difference between them. Uh, sometimes we sell things from our website, which is in the content, but it's not in the database. So for example, uh, presets. If you are a photographer and you are developing your, uh, your own presets, it, there are files that are in the content, but it's not in the database. So you can be interested in the user database and the database itself in the content. Using the infrastructure is also very important for attackers because we can use website to attack others. So the, the website that has been used as a platform got all the responsibility of the attack, which is nice. Um, you can be into a botnet. Oh, also, their reputation is a very value coin in this world, right? Um, for example, about the reputation, I don't know if you, um, who or you are aware or are worried about the CEO. I mean, the search engine optimization to position it in the first position of, uh, of Google and other search engines. So you are more or less uh, worried about that. So do you know that it's easier and cheaper to uh, uh, hire a guy who, do, who does uh, black hat uh, spam and made, uh, put his spam into the, your competitor's website than working in the CEO organically? It's very cheap, right? Something like 200 back, 200 uh, euros uh, to hide this kind of their services. So we, had, we, we will face, and it's normal to face, that the, your uh, competitors, depending on your, the field that you are working in, uh, hire this kind of person to attack your site, put your spam in, and then remove all the, your CEO to, po to position it uh, upper than you. OK, so the live bar what is in top of our game, represents the capacity of protection of your site. I mean, the more bar, more probability of winning in a battle against a, um, an attacker, OK? It's not that they will have the full bar. We're going to be super protected and 100% of secure, because it doesn't exist, OK? But we have more probability. So the idea here is to protect yourself doing this, right? Just uh, with our uh, protection or our ability and so on, just diminish the probability that the attack, uh, attacker uh, could affect that. So there is some other factors that affect our life bar. And this is super important. This is one slide, but this is one of the most important ones. So in this game, each defense category uh, that you add, will add some points at the maximum at 100%. But if you don't, don't update your site, for example, well, the time goes uh, against you always. So if you get time updating your site, your life bar is going to low, OK? By a 5%, that's something I, I invented. If you add additional admins, if you add plugins that are disabled but not uh, uninstalled, it lowers as well. It lowers by month. I mean, time always goes against you. If you have zero points in your life bar, it doesn't mean that you are a hack. It does mean that even a, a script kiddie, any guy that just runs a script, can hack your site. OK? So we have more or less the scenario. We have the four, WordPress, the life bar. Now let's talk about the characters. In the characters of our story, we always have one, kind, one man that we always call hacker. Depending on the culture, some, of, some of, uh, of the cultures use hacker widely. I mean, hacker for everything. And I always want to um, 
to express to all the people that have, what they, we understand as a hacker is a curious person who loves to go beyond limits. That curious person, like for example, any of these guys that probably doesn't sound you, but um, they did some kind of interesting things in their life, right? Women and men, whenever we want. So what is what we talk an attacker? It's a computer hacker whose intention is to always enrich himself in a zero sum game. Why I say zero sum game situation? Because what they what they gain, you lose. Okay, that's the that's the idea of a situation of this kind of games. It's not a it's not a hacker. It's not an attacker. It's someone that gains money, but you gain also as, as well, right? If you earn money, but also using your website, others earn money. That's not an attacker. So. Let me talk about the good guys. In this game, always Ryu, Ken, and other ones. So uh, our teams in this, uh, our mates in this team, it would be white hat hackers, blue red purple teams, security analysts, techno technical supports of hosting providers. That's important because more or, le more or less the 80% of the security issues can be easily uh, solved by the technical support of the hosting provider. Security plugins are also in the good part. Um, and this, uh, let's put this character as Luca. Do not use the same number name uh, that the people that have uh, played this uh, this game. So Luca gonna be our good hacker. What happened with Luca? That yeah, there are some other companies or other copies of Lucas out there that could find good enough, but they are not accurate. They are not good and so on. So keep in mind that uh, this is a a market full of people that try to imitate things, but doesn't really, uh, they are really, they are not really good about this. Okay, so we have hackers on their own. What do we say in Spanish is something like a su bola, just uh, in their house and so on, lonely wolf. So you have in this group, uh, gray hat hackers and hacktivists, for example. What's the difference from the white hat hackers and the gray hat hackers that normally they do good things using illegal methods, okay? For example, Anika is our freelance hacker. Same, we can, we can, uh, we can spot a lot of people out there that say, hey, we are a super, good, super big uh, hacker, a super good one, but they are not, okay? And then we have the bad guys. Bad guys are bad guys, and they are not <laughs> other imitation that bad guys. Um, they are the black hat hackers, cyber terrorists, script kiddies. Script kiddies, uh, you know what the script kiddies are? Yes? So any people that uh, download a malware uh, code or something like that, that they run over a, a website without any information and any knowledge about the code uh, itself, it's a quick kitty. You know, more teenagers that are the testing things at home or something like that, okay? Long wolf that want to, the, uh, want to do uh, bad things, but also organized teams. And inside of the organized teams are State paid uh, teams. Okay, so let's separate our characters in Kami, which is a script kitty with 10, uh, 20 to 30 points of life bar. Then we have Bruce, which is a professional black hat hacker with 50, 70 points. And then we have the general, the boss, which is uh, 100 points in their life bar. So you can imagine more or less the difficult, different, uh, difficult to um, defend yourself or defend your website against these guys. So, in every uh, fighting um, game, you have normally uh, the characters, the scenario, but also the move. Right? Every character has their specific move, right? So it's important right now to explain how a WordPress site can be infected. It's important to Specifically, to um, specify that the um, infections are not in the air. Okay, so there should be a vulnerability, and the vulnerability is the hole where we just put into a exploit for using that vulnerability in a bad way, and then is when the injection happens. The injection can be a final code, 
I mean, spam, uh, changing it, something in the website, like, for example, the payment uh, account. That's very typical. For example, if you, pay, you get paid by uh, PayPal or Stripe or whatever, just changing the account where the paids are going to, uh, or anything in the final call. But if I insert a, back, uh, a backdoor, even if I plug the vulnerability, attackers can, be, can have access to your website, OK? So that's the, bad, uh, the worst case scenario. Um, this is a general schema of how a website loading works, OK? So let me give a little, a little um, work around. So we are this person who use a device. And when we use a browser and we open at, um, any domain, it's in Spanish, but um, you probably uh, can relate in English. When we just uh, type up a domain, we go to, through uh, DNS uh, servers. The DNS server says us, OK, this domain has this IP. And then using this IP, we connect to the specific server. And the server says, ah, you need this website. OK, this website is in this folder. <clears throat> and this folder, I have uh, PHP code. And inside the PHP code, uh, we say that they, we load some database things. And then we uh, uh, return the information to the browser, which is HTML, CSS, yes, and media. Media is sounds, picture, or whatever. So any of you can spot which is the, uh, any of the part of this that can be attacked? Hang on, someone, someone valiant? <laughs> All of them, that's the, the correct <laughs> answer. All of them are possible uh, points for a, an attacker. And the weakest one? That's, that's true. The, the user is the weakest one. OK, so there is something like social engineering, which is the most abused way of attacking anything, right? And is the cheaper one. Um, you can invest a lot of money to protect anything, any infrastructure you have. That the, you, the people that operate inside of the company is the way to get in without spending much, uh, much money. Okay? I don't know if you remember famous nuclear station that uh, was hacked just throwing a pen drive into the into the, the place because it's super protected with a lot of security. Done, that they throw a pen drive, a um, uh, use of a stick. Uh, into the place, and someone just got it and connected into a PC inside of the nuclear station. Got hacked. Super easy. And we can mention a lot of uh, examples, like Uber last year and some of them. OK, so it's important that everything we need, we use, is, uh, has to be protected. For example, in this, in this uh, schema again, it's not also the person, but also the device can be hacked. The connection can be hacked if you don't have SSL certificate and so on. We're going to go through these attacks, or some of them at, the, at least. So the first one, phishing and spam, as I said, is super easy. So Kami, our script kitty, is the level of this one. And the description is injection, some kind of uh, misinformation or whatever inside of your website. So or even for capture information from your website. So your reputation or even information could be leaked. Sorry. So for example, in this case, we have um, a, website, a website which uh, the attacker who uh, managed to, ma uh, to put some plugins, to some, uh, some fake plugins, like Login Wall or whatever, and the um, Joom's GS. What kind of something related with Joomla could be inside a WordPress? So inside of the Joom GS uh, plugin, you can see that there is a mimicking of Akismet plugin. But there are some other uh, fake uh, and malware installed here. Okay, So those that uh, put sus suspected and also the, those that have numbers are bad. So I invite you to check your plugins folder from time to time, because if you find any of these, they are super fresh, because uh, we have seen a lot in the last year. If you have any of these, probably you have been hacked. 
Okay? There are BPLAC random chars, task controller, core stop, core engine, BP zip, or plugins inside of the blind. Uh, the same in themes, SEO theme, classic, or themes within the themes, uh, um, themes uh, folder is because you probably have been hacked in any way of the spam and phishing way. Okay, another attack, brute force and dictionary. This happens when you use a password, super weak password, or you reuse your password from other sites. What is the most typical way of getting inside of a website? Just get into the dark net by a bundle of website, of website login password, uh, things that are there because of the leaks in Dropbox, in Adobe, in, a, in any of these services, and then test all of them in the website you want to attack. In 30% of the cases, you can get a hit. 30%. So I invite you to check in the Wikipedia the 10,000 most common password thing. So you will be surprised that there is a lot of the passwords there that you have been used or is based on the one you use and so on. Also, I recommend you to check the Have I Been Pwned uh, website where you can put your um, your email address and see if that email address has been involved in any of the most interesting, uh, most important leak in the last years. So if it is, if there is a hit in that uh, website of uh, uh, using your, your login uh, address, I recommend to change the, the passwords as soon as possible. Okay, excesses attacks. At the end, it's represented as a redirection. You, when you get into a website, you will see something like you have win something, or you can win an iPad just answering a stupid question, or maybe it's asking you for allowing any kind of control in your browser to check that you are not um, a robot and so on. So this attack uh, should be need a little bit more uh, expertise, right? It's using uh, any kind of exploitation in your website that they can introduce, for example, JavaScript code inside of your, your database or your code. It's just that easy. It's something like, okay, so we load the index.php file, but also there is a file in, uh, at the end of the file that says something like load this uh, JavaScript code. And this JavaScript code have a redirection to a porn site or a Viagra selling, whatever, and thing. So, New vulnerabilities. Discovering new vulnerabilities is not at the hand of everyone, so it needs a lot of uh, uh, level of uh, skills. Uh, to protect it from there, we're gonna talk uh, after. So man in the middle is one of the classical, probably most, most of you knows this attack, is when you are communicating with a server or with a, a service and there is another one that is interfering all your packets of communication from you to the service. So what happens if the communication is not encrypted? That the other person has the information that you are transferring to the service, right? So that's why SSL certificates are important. Because SSL certificate guarantees that if there is a man in the middle, which is something we can't uh, control, doesn't understand anything of what is uh, being uh, transferred. Right? So it affects mainly to the communications. We can see here a, a little schema of how it, how it works, right? So you think that you are connecting to the web application, but in fact it is not. You are connecting through a service in the middle, right? This happens also in the way of DNS poisoning, right? So you are asking to a DNS for a direction, uh, and instead of giving the real direction, it is giving another different direction. So you, at, uh, at, the, at the end, you are just being redirected to a fake website, a website instead of the good one. SSL certificates helps a lot here. Okay, DDOs or DOs. Uh, service, disabled service, right? Um, uh, the negation of service attacks. This is not easy because um, normally you need a lot of connections to uh, affect a website. I don't know if you, you know what's a DOS attack, no? Okay, let me go directly to the graphical explanation.
easy to understand, right? So DDoS attack, um, um, attacks normally just is an overflow of the service you want to uh, put down, right? So in 2016, this happened with a little service in, um, in, um, in San Francisco. Uh, all of them are little devices around the world attacking just one site. So the site got overloaded and go down. This affected to Netflix, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, all of their service, because that service was used by the, all, all of them. But it was a little service. It was a, 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 about uh, a dynamic uh, DNS something. I don't remember exactly. This also was called the first DDoS attack using Internet of Things, because the origin of all the attacks were CCTVs, cameras out there that were manufactured by a specific Taiwan company that haven't protected their, their control. So uh, the hackers may, or the attackers, might, um, might be able to inject a, a zero-day infection in the, all these cameras. So all the cameras loads on a specific date this website, just putting it down. Okay, SQL injection. SQL injection at the end, WordPress depends on SQL because they, they use it. Now there are some projects, interesting projects, that are trying to use SQL Lite, but at the end, SQL is the, is the language of the database, right? So anything that we can manage to inject in the database is like in SQL injection. This can be done by people with some kind of skills. It's not easy because at the end you have to be inside of the site to do this, but uh, it's not that uh, difficult anyway. So ransomware, ransomware, you probably have uh, um, heard about this. It's the, when we sequestrate uh, the information and we ask for a payment for that, okay? It can be done by a professional one. Crypto mining is when we use, we inject something in your website that mines uh, any crypto using the users visiting. I don't know if you have uh, happened that you visit a website and suddenly your laptop started to flow a lot of air and it started to be slow and you were trying to uh, scroll down and it was super slow and if you was... Um, uh, uh, curious enough, you can open the, the task manager and you can see the CPU wasn't 100% and so on, right? So that's probably because there is a crypto mining a JavaScript inside of that. So the idea here is use any user that visits the website to uh, mine crypto. And the bone node, and the bone node is just uh, transfer a website in a node in your uh, in your network, so you can attack others like DDoS attack or whatever. Last year in Geneva, I made a, um, a talk about Favicons, using Favicons to transform a website in a bot node. Okay, a bot node is like this. I have a bot master, you have a lot of WordPress infected, just like a, with a little Favicon in your website that you don't uh, know, and then you can use it in any way. Fine, and the last one. Cross-site contamination, that's super typical as well. Uh, how many of you here in the, in the room have in a hosting provider three or four, uh, four uh, WordPress sites or different sites in the same account? Probably all of you or more or less, more of you. So keep in mind that if you get one of them attacked, all of them fall. And known worth, known firewall gonna detect it because it's an internal uh, infection, okay? So it's important, I mean, I, I'm aware that it's not, a, it's not easy if you are a little agency or whatever to make an account for every uh, site, but I recommend to isolate any of them in a different uh, virtual machine or in a different account, in a different server, whatever. Okay, I invite you to visit this uh, website. Uh, oh, no, I don't have it here. Um, OWASP, sir, uh, OWASP um, project, I haven't put it here, uh, have a top 10, um, top 10 attacks that are famous in every five years, I think, or every four. 
So as you can see here, in 2017, it was the injection, the, the, the most abused one, second, the broken authentication, and so on. And some of them merged in some others, right? I would like to, some of them I will have commented right now, but I would like to mention the broken access control, which is what I mentioned before of reducing user password that has been leaked in other services. And security misconfiguration, this is important, but it's something that you may not be aware of, of that because you are not an expert of this. Uh, insecure design, and this one, the ASICs, components outdated. So it's so important that you update. And what about ChatGPT, any of the, the tools we have right now? What about artificial intelligence? So in our world, we say that this is an artificial intelligence conundrum. I mean, every tool you can use to attack my site, I have the same tool to protect my site. So there is no issue at all. What's the problem? the faster you are in applying these kind of uh, tools inside of your website, okay? So we have been the attacks. We have go now through defense. As more or less the GIF uh, represents, it's a matter of experience normally, okay? So uh, we always laugh with the joke in, uh, in cybersecurity that cybersecurity or security itself and backups are the typical things that you remember about when you already have been hacked. Okay, uh, for phishing and spam, the best defense, some ability, I mean, some knowledge, what, is why, what we are doing right now, and a front-end monitor. Front-end monitor, like, for example, I don't have here, but uh, site check from Sukuri. It's a front-end uh, monitor that you can put your domain there, and uh, I, I, will, I will put that in, uh, later in, the, in, other, in other slide. Uh, that can give you uh, an idea of what is happening in the front-end, okay? Brute force or dictionary attacks. Having a WAF will help with this help a lot. So only also having a limited login plugin will help a lot. Uh, having a WAF is like it going out when, when it's raining without an umbrella. So if you don't have an umbrella, it's stupid, right? So having a WAF is the normal situation that you should have in your website when you put it online. If you put online a website and you don't have a WAF, you are uh, doing something stupid from my point of view. A WAF, I, have, I haven't mentioned before, is a website application firewall. I mean, it's not the firewall that the hosting providers sell to you because it's not a WAF. That's a server WAF, okay? A WAF is a specific uh, firewall for web applications. For example, this is a typical uh, cloud, firewall, uh, cloud firewall, because there are two types, inside of the website or outside of the website. So this is a cloud firewall, which is outside of your website. All the traffic come from the left to the firewall, not to your server, to the firewall. The firewall just analyzes the connection, has a lot of knowledge inside, and if they find that it's uh, dangerous, they drop it. And if they find that it's okay, they then hit your server, okay? So they clean a lot your, your connection. If you have an internal WAF, the problem is that the visitor or attacker already hit your server, okay? That's, the, that's when the WAF pops up and say, okay, let's see if you, your intentions are laid, and then you can get into the WordPress site. But you are using the resources of your, your, uh, your server, okay? Attacks, excess attacks, just uh, the WAF serves a lot, but also something that um, is not very well known and has a very bad reputation, but it's uh, the critical tool for that. It's Files Integrity Scanner. File Integrity Scanner is a scanner that says, hey, this file has changed it in two bytes or something like that, okay? So it can, make very, it can be very noisy. A lot of uh, files change from time to time, especially if you are doing an update or something like that. But the, this uh, scanner will clean the typical ones and try to show you how, which of the changes are really important. But it's important to have. For example, plugins like Wordfriends or iThemes, they have files integrity scanners. New vulnerability, important is the WAF, 
because the WAF is um, getting all the knowledge of the uh, previous attacks, and maintenance. Mind in the middle, SSL, as I mentioned before. Since you have SSL, any data, data theft or if dropping a guy with any kind of intention can, uh, can be protected, can be uh, rejected, I mean, in a communication. If you have a VPN, happens the same, but not with a connection of a service, with the whole, okay, thank you, with the whole, uh, with the whole process, uh, process of uh, navigating, okay? DDoS attack, the WAF. Digital injection, WAF, and checking the logs, that something changed. Ransomware, I mean, I'm going a little bit uh, speedy right now because all of this is gonna be online, so you can uh, download and uh, study separately. Ransomware, the only protection from ransomware is backups. It's the only with the guarantee. Backups. So if you did a, a backup, I don't know, Three, day, three days ago, you will find this in this situation. You probably have seen this movie, and you have the same problems. You can go back, try to fix something, but you missed all the things that happened after that. And you have to go back, and you don't know when you have to, back, to go back. You don't know exactly the point when your site got infected. So you have the same problem as this uh, movie film. But it's important. Ransomware, there is no other there is not, um, protection about that. There are a lot of tools out there that say, hey, we protect about ransomware and so on. But the only one that right now is effective is backups. OK, crypto mining, just checking logs and open channels to hear your users, because if your users are there, um, the target, your user should be have, should have uh, any way of contacting you, right? Bot nodes, same, WAF and logs, cross-site contamination. As I said before, there is no other way of detecting an, an infection, an internal infection, than the file integrity scanner. Something changed, and you don't know, you check the file, and what's this? Then you know that there is an infection. But there is no WAF, there is no, uh, maybe the logs, but the logs will be a very, very noisy. The maintenance, anything, right? Okay, let me summarize the defense list category, right? As we said, uh, we saw, WAF is very important in mostly all of them, of the attacks. So I give 40 points. Monitoring, just logging, scanners, triggers, 10 points. Backups, you're having a good, a good strategy, even if this is super important, for example, for ransomware, I give it 10 points. SSL certificates, 10 another points. Maintenance, hardening, and so on, it's important having someone or a company in charge of this, 20 uh, points. And the expertise, your knowledge, the, the way the human expert instead of, uh, I mean, uh, automatic things, 10 points. If you sum up all of them are 100 points. So having any of, the, uh, of your measure of the defense in any of these categories is important. So the final part of uh, any fighting game is the combos. There is not only the, um, the, that you know how to attack and how to defense, but also the combination of some of them can make a most, more powerful uh, things. But it's important that we take in, uh, keep in mind this formula. This formula is one of the things that are most important here in WordPress. Uh, it says something like, each cost of a web down will be always less than the each cost of a web hacker. It means the cheaper recovery of a web hacker will be always, always, always much more expensive than any cost that you can uh, get from a web, uh, a web down because of an update or something like that, okay? So always a hack in your website will be more expensive. This is also important, <coughs> sorry, it's also important that um, your website is like in this isometric uh, image. It's everything that you built from the terrain up. So if you build a bu uh, building, you build, if you build a lot of WordPress sites like, uh, like little houses and so on, is in your liability, in your responsibility of the site owner. So the app, uh, data information, security of the site. I mean, it's you are the responsible. That means that if you have a leak, and the leak in, uh, includes some 
uh, sensitive information of users and so on, you will be the one who will be fined by the GDPR, by the DPA, whatever. Less than that, or um, below that, there is the hosting provider. It's the platform where you start building, right? And that's the, the, the company that's uh, uh, responsible of the network, hardware, so uh, operating system, and so on, right? If you want, you can check what is WordPress doing in Security Matter. It's important that the uh, WordPress is super aware that it's one of the most attacked CMEs, and they are doing great in this part. So you can check this, um, this website to know what, is the, what they are doing. It's important also to know that WordPress, out of the box, is super secure. The problem is, is that it's super easy to make an unsecured WordPress after it, OK? And that is on you. My combo, I recommend to have a CloudWav CDN. You can use Sucuri or Cloudflare, which are the most famous ones. Security plugins with second factor authentication. You can use WordPress in the free tier. iTheme security. I recommend to have fail to ban or login, uh, limit logging attempts, which is a plugin that limits the quantity of times you can uh, get, try to log in their website. And uh, any kind of uh, CAPTCHA plugin. I recommend CAPTCHA for BP, but uh, you can use any of them. It's important also to have monitoring uh, solutions. Sucuri provides some of them, but uh, also PatchStack is a, uh, it's like a plugin vulnerability uh, dashboard that helps a lot with uh, vulnerabilities and have an internal web if you pay for it. Uh, it's important also to pay attention to the hosting where you or your website is, because they're gonna provide you by using the, uh, I mean, the SSL certificate. The support gonna help you in a bad day if they made backups. There are a lot of hosting providers there that provide backups, so you can you have you can be covered in that way. Also, there are some hosting that provide managed plans. Okay which is something like, okay, I don't have to take care about anything, about plugins or about whatever, so they do. I only have to focus in my job or in the things I, want, I like. And backups. For backups, I recommend, if you want to do that, WordPress using Jetpack, BlockBolt, Updraft, or if you are expertise enough, just uh, develop your, your, your own solution. My, I have three slides more. <laughs> The importance of updating is important because it's the security patches, and the security patches always come after the exploit. So if there is a security patch, it's because someone is, use, is abusing the vulnerability that it covers. It's important also because of the, this third point. Overwrite your code with trustworthy code. When every time you uh, update, you don't change. Uh, every little thing that changed from the previous version. You just remove the plugin, remove the WordPress core, or remove the theme, and put the new one. So that, uh, that will help you to assure that the code now is clean, or at least that code. And more or less 70% of, uh, of the attack success attack it happens because of the outdated plugins and themes. About passwords, just only to say that the factors, there are a lot of factors of authentication. Normally, there are three, something you are, something you have, and something you know. The problem is that the more factors, more secure, but more complex, something that you have to think about. And that's all. With this comb, you can do the KO and win the battle. Game over. Thank you. I think we've got a couple of minutes before we go for lunch, so if there are any questions in the hall, there's one over there. Hello. Uh, I just would like to make sure that if we spoke about SSL, I think you mean TLS, or? Huh? Uh, I, mean, I mean, obviously, right now, then the certificate, uh, the SSL new version is the TLS, but uh, there are some other, some a lot of legacy uh, connection is still. So yeah. I normally say SSL, but of course, SSL and TLS. Yes. Because I think it's important to uh, understand that SSL is decrypted, TLS 1.0, 1.1 also. So 
you have to make sure that you use TLS at least 1.2. That's all, my addition. Totally agree. Noted. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? Or are you all too hungry for questions? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're, I, I haven't bored you enough. <laughs> Another one. Hello. Um, this is a kind of more um, tec technical question. From my point of view, you should always prefer an external service for a web application firewall than installing a security plugin such as um, WordFence or anything else. Um, as you mentioned, because of the, the same source, so the load on the server will be the same. Mm -hmm. And we always have, in my opinion, quite a big performance impact yeah. in the normal situation as well. So what's your opinion generally? When would you use a plugin such as Security Firewall, WordFence, or whatever? Um, because it seems to me this is just like, if you're not able like to do, let's call it um, real security on a on, on the right level, it's better to have such kind of plugin, but it's not like the, the proper solution if you can do it otherwise. Is that could you summarize? That's a that? good question because um, um, from my point of view, they are uh, compatible. So at the end, you have the external WAF, so you don't consume your own resources, and you clean the traffic that hits your website. But at the same time, it's good to have in the, inside of the WordPress because some of the attacks can be through can can go through the when the firewall. At the end, the firewall um, uses the knowledge of the previous attack to detect the new one. So maybe new ones uh, are not detected, but maybe Something uh, triggers uh, anything in the in the internal WAF. The internal WAF will have less work to do if you have an external one, so the resources are not going to be so impacted. For example, in a DDoS attack, an internal WAF will make your site your site unavailable because it will try to analyze every connection and so on. The resources will be will go high, and then you get it down. So having the external one can filter that, and then the connections inside can be analyzed within a normal range of uh, you know, uh, performance. So for, in your opinion, the, an optimal setup would be to use both? Yeah, but it depends of, uh, depends of, um, of the target uh, website to protect. If there is a maximum inside of cybersecurity, is don't invest much more money in security in something than the value of their website, right? So. If you have a blog, uh, a personal blog, and then internally you don't have too much content and so on, with an internal WAF, it's OK. Keep in mind also that an external WAF will need that you made some modifications in the, in the DNS, right? Yeah, sure. So making this is not also uh, Easy possible for, for some of, for some of the st uh, stacks, you know, especially if you have a company that have an IPA and we have some other, some other uh, products inside of the website, depending, right? So in a general status, if you can uh, uh, afford it and uh, the content worth to you, it's better to have to, uh, um, both. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Any other? The most dangerous instrument seems to be the man. Mm -hmm. And in psychology, there is a kind of uh, science profiling. Uh, do you do also profiling against the bad guys from North Korea, from China, from Russia? Yes. Is there, is there a psychology of bad guys? That's a that's a good point. I mean, uh, I'm super fan of psychology. I'm a super fan. I'm not a psychologist, but I love it, and I love to make it profiles by myself. There is nothing. I mean, at my level, there is nothing uh, official that makes uh, that um, groups efforts to make these kind of things. Okay, but there, it, it should be. I mean, from a point of view, I. I invite you <laughs> to get into, if you are a psychologist or you know someone, to, to get into this part because it's super funny. I have a talk in Spanish that is, talks about uh, how to identify who is behind an attack 
just based in the way they attacked. And it's funny because you can identificate in the, in the code if it is a script kitty, if it is an organized team, if it is a lonely wolf, if it was uh, from uh, China, Russia, or some of them. There are some clues that after a lot of years checking these kind of things, you can train your eye and your mentality to understand more or less who is behind. But it's super interesting field. Okay, I suggest we leave it at that. I'm sure oh, there's a, there is another question. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, your combo shows this CDN mm -hmm. as a. I don't understand now, right now, what is the benefit for using a CDN for the security of a website. That's a good point. I mean, CDN is not uh, it's nothing related with uh, security directly. I mean, even in some uh, situation, it can be something bad because you change something in your website, but until the CDN is not updated, you will find uh, your site still infected or uh, uh, vulnerable. Uh, but the, the main point of that is, is that's why I put it in into brackets is because it's something that makes your website uh, a speed or more speedy and not available on, uh, at the global level, right? Uh, and it's normally attached with a WAF at, the, at all. So that's why I put in brackets. But the, the good part is the WAF, not the CDN. Okay, I suggest if you have further questions, Nestor's going to be around today. For sure. Um, we've got a one and a half hour lunch break now. The restaurant, you've got to go out of this building and just walk opposite. It's the building opposite. And as said, um, the fish announcement this morning was an April the 1st joke. So those of you who have announced first themselves. Joke. It's the first one. <laughs> those who. Thank you very much. <laughs>